Hello and welcome to the final installment of the Zul'jin Distillery Invitational League. It's Grand Finals Day. I am the Crushinator and I will be your caster for this evening for this best of five matchup between the number one seeded Nexus Cats and number two seeded Regen Ghost. Our teams are about to get ready to go, so I'm going to take you over to the map screen and let you know about tonight's matchup. These teams have agreed ahead of time to shadow ban Hanamura Temple and Haunted Mines. So there will be no memory today, only the most skilled of matchups on the most skilled of maps. In addition to Hanamura Temple and Haunted Mines, Towers of Doom, Sky Temple, Braxis Holdout, and Infernal Shrines are banned. And at the behest of Regen Ghost, we are going to Battlefield of Eternity for game number one. teams are getting ready to go here. We've got a random person in the lobby. They have left. We're going to get into the game in just a moment. Mark Zombie, El Taquito, Buffalo, welcome. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're ready for some exciting grand finals action. So I'm just double checking to make sure everyone's ready. Regen Ghost is ready. The cats are ready. We're going to be loading in here to Battlefield of Eternity in just a moment. As soon as they find the start game button. <laughs> I don't want to flip back to the screen, man. I want to go straight into the draft from here. We're going to get there. Don't worry about it. These are two teams with a storied history here. Good to go. Good to go. Played each other a few times here in the XGDI played each other in the NGS seasons. This is going to be a good matchup here. Nexus Cats have been on a roll lately, but Regen Ghost is looking fantastic. Looks like we've got a draft starting just about now. Battlefield of Eternity is here and underway. Let's get it going. Now this being a best of five series, there are only six maps to choose from, which means we may see as many maps as possible. There's only going to be one map that's held off the board entirely tonight if it, this series does go the distance. Battlefield, not one that we uh, that we actually see a lot here in the XGDI, but we're starting off with it today, and Nexus Cats are going to ban away ETC. One thing to note for this series, the new patch, the new Nexus Anomaly, the new season did start today. So the ETC nerfs are in, the Chromie nerfs are in. Gazlo and Diva are banned for this series. You will not see new Diva or new Gazlo for this grand final, as we see Regen Ghost banning away the Cassia. El Taquito putting the shout out to Vel, who's literally the most awesomest, and I would tend to agree. As Artanis is banned away by the Nexus Cats, the Hierarch of the Dalem will not slippity slap the Immortals in this here matchup. Regen Ghost thinking about their second ban here. Li Ming, highly possible here on Battlefield of Eternity. Vala, also very possible in the hands of Artha now. It is going to be a May ban. Is that a new May portrait I spy? I don't remember May looking so slick in that ban portrait up there. I feel like that's an update. Something to note here on this patch. Nexus Cats have the first pick opportunity. We'll see what they want to prioritize here. The Doctor is going to go ahead and pick up Tassadar. I believe Tassadar came through unscathed with this patch. Orphea did not, however. So the Doctor's famed Orphea will be slightly less powerful today if she indeed hits the field. But Tassadar still looking great. Still doing fantastic out there. Rainer and Deckard will be picked up in response for Regen Ghost. Deckard did receive a nerf. Ruby has gone from a 10 to a 20 second cooldown. But I think Deckard's still going to be just fine. I think Deckard's going to be doing just great. And Rainer, of course, as strong as ever here on Battlefield Eternity. Battlefield of Eternity for that race potential. Nexus Cats looking to pair up with Tassadar here with their next two picks. It's going to be a Sonya and an Anduin coming out from Turd Herder and McGiblets. 
Interesting to see Sonya come through that early, coming from Turd Herder. Sonya can do race, can do solo camp, so uh, definitely a strong pickup there. Anduin, of course, with the ultimate save potential with the Leap of Faith, can get people out of trouble with those Deckard Kane drops. Garrosh going to be banned away by Regen Ghost. Anduin is often used as a counter to Garrosh, so it makes some sense to take Garrosh away so you don't get Garrosh and Anduin on the same squad. And in turn, Diablo will be banned away by the Nexus Cats. El Taquito is correct. This is a medallion game. New Anomaly is in, as we see Stitches and Blaze picked up by Regen Ghost. Interesting, interesting stuff. Stitches did get a slight buff. A little bit extra uh, minion damage. I think PvE damage in general on that slam. Tass did get a small nerf. Okay. So he didn't get by totally unscathed. Nexus Cat's going to try to round out their comp here. It is going to be the Vala coming out for Arthur now, and Mark Zombie going to pick up the Johanna to try to slow down the auto attacks of the Blaze and the Rainer. And a sla Snap Kel'Thuzad coming in from Dub C613. Kel'Thuzad can get some quick stacks early on Battlefield of Eternity because the teams generally do not rotate. You're stuck there in the bottom. Can do some work around those immortals with the vision and terrain. So we'll see. Can Nexus Cats jump on top of this Kel'Thuzad or is it going to be Pick City? Game number one. About to be underway here. Nexus Cats versus Regen Ghost. Battlefield of Eternity. Let's get into it. I say nerf, you say revert for Ruby. It's true. Ruby, I think, went from a 30 second cooldown to a 20 second cooldown to a 10 second cooldown. Now back to a 20. So it is reverting to an earlier state of Deckard. All right, we are loading in here to Battlefield. Taking a look, we've got a serious pick comp on one side, but Anduin coming in for the opponents. So we'll see who comes out on top. Here we go, game number one. On the left in the blue, we have the Nexus Cats with Turd Herder playing the Sonya, Mark Zombie on the Johanna, the Giblets playing Anduin, the Doctor on Tassadar, and Arthanau on the Vala. As I forget to click the thing. Now you can see them all. On the right in the red, we have Three Gen Ghost with Shui playing the Blaze, Dub C613 on the Kel'Thuzad, Mongoose playing Stitches, Andrew on the Deckard, and Litterock playing the Rainer. Here we go, Battlefield of Eternity, game number one of the grand finals here for the XGDI. Good luck, have fun. No you. No you is called. Regen Ghost, wishing luck in the best way possible. Regen Ghost going to be looking for that Stitches hook into a possible chain from Kel'Thuzad. They got the root follow-up, they got the Rainer pumping out the damage. Looking for stacks early as Dub C613. The Nexus Cats are evading everything for now. Stitches hook goes out. Cannot find the fadeaway pick. Sonya and Blaze will be trading in the top lane. Both good regen heroes. Only one of them has mana, though. So Sonya theoretically wins out over time. But we'll see which one of them pulls ahead in this matchup. Once again, looking for stacks, but a good iron skin from Johanna denies the chains of Kel'Thuzad. That's a lot of damage onto Stitches. Mongoose could be in a little bit of trouble here, but the Deckard Potion is going to top him off along with that extra healing received mongoose took at level one with that patchwork creation both teams just trading blows for now looks like vol is on a little bit of a rotation could be arthur now going for that top camp to betray the 1v1 in the top lane so it is going to be 4v3 for regen ghost in the bottom lane for a brief time but the wave clear from tassadar and johanna just so strong that uh that really won't be missed Litterock is checking the bottom altar. Looks like Vala is peeling around for a possible gank here. Shui does manage to squeeze on by Vala with that jet propulsion. And we're going to see Artha now go ahead and start up this top camp. But Shui may not give that away for free. 
As we see the rest of Regen Ghost realizing their advantage, trying to push in with this 4v3. Sonya heading up to help. It looks like Shui is just going to be stuck clear in this lane, while the rest of Regen Ghost goes to take the bottom camp. Going to try to force Mark Zombie back. It will be a trade, top and bottom, Causer camps. As we see Arthur now starting to rotate down to that Shaman camp on the left for the Nexus Cats, and Litterock and crew are going to head on over to the right. Shaman camps will be picked up summarily before this first objective. Shui working on this clear, getting harassed by Turd Herder. But Blaze's increased wave clear, especially with that extra talent. Actually, going Neural Stimpak, so not getting that, uh, that auto attack advantage. Still Blaze wave clear, pretty good even without that. Shaman camps are going to be picked up, Immortal spawning just now. Nexus Cats moving around, just looking for a little bit of extra damage onto Stitches on this rotation. And the Immortals are now spawning. Vala already on that top Immortal. Sonya trying to stick around in the top lane to possibly clear out that Shaman. Gonna go ahead and work on Vala for now. Regen Ghost is getting this clear, but they're not getting a lot of damage onto this first Immortal. The Doctor using that Shock Ray to put some extra damage out. Could get the hook here. Ooh. The Doctor squeezes away for the meantime. Looks like Regen Ghost is moving on to this top Immortal, trying to find Arthur now in this rotation, but with good map awareness, Vala is going to escape. We aren't quite at the halftime show just yet. Litterock trying to poke in for some extra Immortal damage. Now both teams are in a bit of a defensive posture. Nice vault by Vala gets away from the hook, but the stun lands. Ienduin with the save, but the root will land onto Turd Herder. Mark Zombie is right in the thick of things and will trigger the halftime show. Nice unstoppable onto Shui. Gets Blaze on out of there. And now the Immortals are reset in aggressive positions. So we're going to see Regen Ghost get as much shielding off as possible, but it looks like Nexus Cats are going to be picking up this first Immortal of the game. And there it is. Anduin did manage to back for mana in the middle of all that. Objective will be pushing down the bottom lane here. Blaze and Sonya up to the top lane. Taking a look at the XP, pretty even for both of our squads. Nexus Cats are a little bit ahead. They managed to eke out a little more XP during the objective. So they've got this level seven, about a half level lead here as this first immortal pushes down the bottom lane. Checking on the, in on the Kelpha's odd stacks, 13 out of 30 so far. Not too bad, but not stacking out of his mind just yet. Definitely have some time to get that done. Mark Zombie's been very good on the Iron Skins, denying as many chains as possible. Shui is coming in for the rotation, though. They want to catch Nexus Cats out of here. We do have the hook landing onto Tassadar. The Leap of Faith is good. The Doctor will survive for the meantime. Hartha now, oh, almost getting that multi-shot kill onto Mongoose, but Stitch's health pool and regen is just so good. Turd Herder getting some extra push in the top lane, denying a little bit of XP there as well that Regen Ghost is already a tad behind on. So Nexus Cat's definitely getting an advantage. A nice hook onto Johanna, but the Iron Skin is available and it looks like Johanna will walk away for the meantime. A little bit of a wall from Tassadar just to be safe. There's the hook onto Vala. But once again, the Doctor just warding away any extra damage with those big shock rays. Now at 90 stacks on that level 1 quest. Turd Herder did manage to take the top Causer Camp 1v1 versus Shui. Nice little pick up there for the Nexus Cats. The cats are in a, looking like they're in a pretty dominant spot here. They've got the bottom wall down. 4v4 wave clear is doing pretty well. They've got the, uh, they've got Kalthazod on the back foot. But with this pick comp coming out from Regen Ghost, they can absolutely... They only need is one little positioning mistake, and they can convert that into a kill and a map advantage. Immortals are spawning once again. Arthur now rotating up to the top to see if they can find Shui, but Shui still has the safety of this wall and will get away with that extra armor. Ooh, the hook is not quite there onto Turd Herder, but Arthur now oh, manages to vault away from the root. Shui can't quite land the jet propulsion. Gonna have to be careful there, getting down below 400 health, but we'll manage to retreat and use those potions. Mortals have spawned. Nexus Cats are in defensive position, and level 10 is right on the horizon here. 
So we'll see if Regen Ghost wants to move in here. They move in before level 10. They're trying to get something done. Turd Herder on the wrong side of the wall, but Shui taking a ton of damage there. Parthenau is on the chase. Looks like Regen Ghost were looking for a quick opportunity before level 10. They don't sustain any losses, but it won't be long before Heroics are part of the next battle. Litterock trying to pepper some damage onto the Nexus Cats as they burn down this Immortal. Once again, the halftime show is triggered. Johanna heading down to the bottom lane trying to get this level 10 as we see defensive positions for this Immortal, but Regen Ghost is in no position to defend. They just have to try to soak level 10 here. It looks like we may have a full shield Immortal coming in for the Cats. Mark Zombie sees the regen ghost moving onto this camp and is going to very aggressively move up. The Leap Light Bomb is there, catching two. That's going to be Deckard Kane and Blaze going down. Great map awareness from the cats. Catches regen ghost, trying to get greedy with this camp. And that's going to be a full shield immortal barreling down the top lane along with that stolen camp. The rest of the cats are going to elect to split push here. Sonya will be in the top lane. Gonna have to be careful to get away from the picks. The rest of Regen Ghost is in the top, but the cats are just gonna push down the bottom lane, trying to get as much value as they can on this map. Level 10 is about to be here for Regen Ghost as they go ahead and burn down this top immortal. I go ahead and disconnect for you there. Luckily, not too much is going on. There we go, we're back. Bottom fort is taken out and actually pushing straight onto the keep wall is the Nexus Cats doing fantastic work here. Regen Ghost does manage to take out the Immortal in the top lane. Kalthazad and Deckard Kane are going to rotate down to the bottom lane. Level 12 to level 10 here for the Nexus Cats as they rotate back to this neutral Causer camp. They're playing this very well. Regen Ghost, they do get dismounted by Mark Zombie. They know that they're incoming. Actually, the hook is there. The Unstoppable lasting long enough. There's the double stun in the choke. The bunker is out, Shui manages to relocate as well as Mongoose, a nice sleep by Andrew, and it looks like the rest of Regen Ghost will manage to escape. Well scouted by Mark Zombie. Some great ults coming out, but ultimately everyone survives. Sonya, just doing work in the top lane. Regen Ghost is taking chances here, they have to take chances to make this work. And it looks like they're going to rotate around, they want to find Turd Herder on this rotation. It is four people coming up, the hook. Will not land, Turd Herder managing to get on the other side of that minion wave. Delaying the capture on this Shaman camp, trying to time it out with the objective, is the Nexus Cats. The rest of Regen Ghost just trying to catch up on XP. They gotta work on level 13 as Nexus Cats are nearly there. Shui is coming in, sees McGiblets. The cap will be there, but the double stun is out. There's the root combo from Kel'Thuzad. That's a lot of damage going out. The Giblet's keeping everyone very healthy with that Anduin, though. There is the leap. The Light Bomb combo will not be there, but that's enough for Kel'Thuzad. Light Bomb does stun Stitches in the top lane, but a full sleep from Andrew. And Regen Ghost will walk right on out of there. Kel'Thuzad does get the buyback with that phylactery. So we'll be back on the field very quickly, but the Nexus Cats, with the level 13 advantage, will get onto this Immortal. Iron Skin is popped by Mark Zombie, trying to ward away the rest of the team, trying to trigger this halftime show. Turd Herder is hooked into the into the uh, cubbyhole there by Mongoose. The last multi-shot does trigger the halftime show for these Immortals. And here we go. Nexus Cats are on the defense for now. Mark Zombie moving ahead once again. That Iron Skin doing great work against that Kel'Thuzad. Still 27 out of 30 stacks. The stun is there. The root follow-up just not quite in time as Mongoose walks away. Tassadar and Vala. Looks like the rest of the Nexus Cats are going to be going into offense mode as Mark Zombie once again just trying to rotate around and dismount Regen Ghost, slowing them down on these rotations. Not a lot of health left on this Immortal. Turd Herder does get the leap in. There's the counter stun from Shui. And Regen Ghosts do have the flank here. There is the Bile from Stitches. This Turd Herder is caught and rooted. Ooh, but the Anduin pull is good. Double stun onto Mongoose. Shui with the jet propulsion to stop. And Litterock, very, very low. Andrew may not make it out of there. Raynor did make it out. Andrew won't be so lucky. 
as Deckard Kane is going to go down here trying to escape through that top avenue. And Nexus Cats, once again with a very healthy Immortal, will be pushing down, I believe, the top lane here. And another Camp Steel coming out from the Cats. Anduin backing for mana once again. McGiblets will be catching up with the rest of the Nexus Cats. So it will be level 13 here for Regen Ghost. Level 15 has arrived for the Nexus Cats. Rainer in the bottom lane just trying their best to soak before the defense is needed. Oh, there's a lot of damage on Tavala. Very, very close to a pick there. The Chains of Kel'Zod quest is done, so that's an extra bit of spell power for Dub C613. We may see those picks be a lot more effective here. The root combo not coming out. Not landing on any one of the cats. Oh. There's the big sleep onto two from Andrew. Regen Ghost looking to capitalize here. There is the chain, but the unstoppable from Mark Zombie countering the Kel'Zod once again. Blessed Shield is out. Mongoose looking very low. There's the Light Bomb. Stitches is going to go down. Shui may be next. Yep, Blaze is down, but the counter kill onto Johanna. It is level 16 to 13, but without their tank, the Nexus Cats may... Looks like they may be looking at the core here. The objective is on top of the core. Turd Herder looking to zone away the rest of Regen Ghost, but this could be lethal. WC613 gets the kill onto Anduin. Turd Herder getting targeted by two towers. Core is at 20%. This objective is still very healthy, and Nexus Cats gamble and win, taking this game and going up in the series 1-0. GG. Very nice ending push there from the Nexus Cats. The kills say 6-3. to three. I feel like that is a product of me disconnecting, because that doesn't seem right. There had to have been more kills than that, haven't there? Maybe there weren't. There were a lot of en engages there where nobody ended up dying. That could be correct, but I feel like that might be a little bit of a glitch there. Anyway, Nexus Cats do take the win. Vala leading the way on the hero damage for the Nexus Cats. Kel'Thuzad got a little bit countered there by Mark Zombie. Some fantastic iron skins throughout that game, but still leading the way on hero damage was Dub C613. Taking a look at the final talents before we head to the break. All right, game one is in the books. Nexus Cats draw first blood, but remember this is a best of five, so they will need two more wins to take this grand finals. And there's plenty of time for Regen Ghost to come on back and make things tough for them. But we're going to head to the break as we set up game number two. Don't go far. We'll be back soon. Nexus Cats versus Regen Ghost. All right, we are back. Game number two about to be underway here. Nexus Cats up 1-0 in this series versus Regen Ghost. Game two, we're looking at Dragonshire. This draft about to start, so let's get back to the maps. Remind you of the state of this series. For this best of five, Towers of Doom, Sky Temple, Hanamura Temple, Braxis Holdout, Infernal Shrines, and Haunted Mines are banned away for this series. Battlefield of Eternity was won by the Nexus Cats for game number one, and game number two will be going to Dragonshire. Let's get into the draft. Summon Goose has been called in the chat. We'll have to bring out my best boy after this game. We'll bring him out between games two and three here. Unless he's right here. Oh. He is right here. We might be able to summon a goose inside this draft. Look at that. Pre-gen ghost thinking about band number one. Come here, goosey. Come here. Yeah. He was right here. Real August, thank you for spending your bananas. This is Goose. He likes to hang out with me while I'm casting. We got him around Christmas time last year, and he's been a welcome addition to the family. Regen Ghost is banned away May, and once again we see ETC banned by Nexus Cats. Are they your favorite? I bet they are. He doesn't like to be held for too long. I'm going to put him down. Thank you for visiting, Goose. Tassadar. 
gonna be banned away by regen ghosts. They do not want to see the doctor on that hero anymore. Now the Nexus Cat's thinking about their next ban here. We got two tanks banned away. Interested to see whether we're gonna see a Deckard ban come out. Or whether they want to pick that up for themselves. It is once again gonna be a Cassia ban by the Nexus Cats. That leaves first pick over to Regen Ghost. We'll see what they want to prioritize here on Dragonshire. Shui is going to go ahead and snap up the Rexar. Rexar very strong with the point control, often seen on Dragonshire, on uh, Braxis Holdout, which is banned for this series. So snapping up a uh, definitely an S tier top laner is Regen Ghost. But in response, the Nexus Cats are going to go ahead and grab Garrosh and Malfurion, a very classic pick combination. Garrosh was banned away from the last series, so we'll see what Mark Zombie can do with the big brown orc. Stukov and Johanna are going to be picked up in response by Regen Ghost. Johanna definitely did some work for the Cats last series, and we have seen both of these teams play Stukov to great effect. Andrew has made some big, big plays this season on the Stukov, so we'll see what he can pull out here. Nexus Cats thinking about their next ban. It is going to be Rainer. Going to take that away from Litterock. One thing I think the Nexus Cats have got to be worried about here, Stukov leads to some combos. Johanna grouping people up. I, uh, I think there might be a Maiev in the future of this draft. We'll see how it develops. But the Warden's Cage silence combo is uh, definitely nothing to, nothing to push off. Regen Ghost thinking about their next ban. Garrosh and Malfurion already locked in. It will be the Zul ban. Not wanting to deal with that pressure, with that bone prison onto the Rexar. The Doctor will go ahead and grab the Orphea, and Arthanau is going to go ahead and snap up the Zeratul. Very common to have a roamer here on Dragonshire. Zeratul is one of the best at it. Regen Ghost, they've got their top laner. They've got their Stukov and Johanna looking to lock in their DPS here. They're going to have to think of things that aren't too vulnerable to the Zeratul. It's going to be Sylvanas and Greymane. A very potent combo here coming out for Regen Ghost. Sylvanas can absolutely squeeze away from a ganking Zeratul, avoid the damage of Orphea, and Greymane can just execute the very low health assassin. Looking to round out the draft here is Turd Herder. Got to think of what they want to play against this Rexar. Let's see what Turd Herder wants to put in that top lane. It is going to be Akira. High damage assassin. Can definitely get behind the Misha. Bit of a glass cannon, but absolutely a big contributor to point control here on Dragonshire. Chris Zombie and Buffalo, thank you very much for the follows as we head on in here to game number two. It's Nexus Cats versus Regen Ghost. Nexus Cats trying to go up 2-0. Regen Ghost trying to even up this series. Let's get ready. Let's get into it. Here we go. Alrighty. I've updated my thing. Everyone is set to the right heroes. Fantastic. I'm going to remember to click the button this time. It's going to be great. Loading on in here to Dragonshire. Arthur now plays a mean Zeratul here on Dragonshire, but there's a lot of powerful heroes on the side of Regen Ghost, so I'm excited to see this matchup. Let's get into game number two. Once again, on the left in the blue are the Nexus Cats with Arthanau playing the Zeratul. Turd Herder is going to be on Kira, the Doctor playing Orphea, McGiblet's on the Malfurion, and Mark Zombie on the Garrosh. On the right in the red, we have Regen Ghost with Litterock playing the Rexar, Mongoose playing Johanna, Dub C613 on the Greymane, Shui is playing Sylvanas, and Andrew is on the Stukov. Five, four, I think in my overlay, three, might have got two, the wrong people, because I think one. Shui picked up that Rexar in draft, so we had a little bit of a swaparoo there. A little bit of a swaparoo by the members of Regen Ghost. As we see our team's going to clash here. Mark Zombie looking for a pick onto basically anyone but Johanna. 
Getting some stacks on that Warbreaker, and we will see the waves meet. Parthenau is here to help that wave clear. Another couple stacks for Mark Zombie. And both teams with pretty similar wave clear here in the opening salvo. There's the throw, forcing out the Iron Skin. The Root actually will land onto Johanna, forcing out an extra Unstoppable using that Gladiator's Medallion. And Arthenau converts the kill for kill number one. Checking in on the top lane. Turd Herder and Litterock both regenerating quite a lot of health in the open and go. Just trading back and forth. Arthenau trying to pick up this soak in the mid lane while the rest of the Nexus cats are going to start heading over to their siege camp. Dub C613 on the gray main along with Mongoose going to start that as well. Very tight on the macro timings are our two squads. Checking in on the top lane. Looks like we have a gank attempt onto Kira. Can Turd Herder get away here? Under 50 health. Does manage to tap Arthenau trying to force back Shui and Turd Herder will survive. Both teams going to pick up their siege camps in the bottom lane. Shrines are active. Nice gank attempt onto Turd Herder, but just not quite enough. Two teams very even on XP so far, but it looks like the next point of contention will be this bottom lane shrine. Kira looking to battle things out versus Rexar in the top lane. Zeratul clearing mid and trying to keep an eye and make sure there's no quick dragon. Some nice silences sending Nexus Cats away from that area. Mark Zombie looking for the throw. Oh, doesn't quite get it. Just lands on a minion. There's the route onto Andrew. Mark Zombie gonna have to be careful here, looking around with very low health. But here comes Arthur now, trying to threaten the back line, putting a little damage onto Mongoose here. A triple stack from Mark Zombie onto the members of Regen Ghost. Getting that quest done very, very quickly. Checking in on the top lane here, it seems like Rexar is doing good things in that top lane, but Arthenau is starting to get some extra soak here for the cats. Mongoose in a little bit of trouble. Mark Zombie looking for the throw. Won't find a second kill onto Johanna here. Forcing Zeratul to stay in the middle lane to watch for that cap. Mongoose gonna come on up, try to clear this wave. Force a rotation out. It is a, uh, a 3v3. Down in the bottom lane. Nexus Cat's gonna go ahead and claim the bottom shrine. Arthenau starting to rotate up to the top lane. Misha is the target of Turd Herder. Looks like Arthenau will finish up the kill with a cleave. And that means the Nexus Cats will claim the top for the meantime. There's the stun and root. Ooh, but the iron skin is good, and Mongoose will walk away from that root. Nice slow silence combo onto Mark Zombie. So again, our two teams just battling it out, trading these shrines. Waiting for any sort of advantage. Mark Zombie does use the Indomitable, but it gets the throw onto Mongoose. Was looking for the throw onto Sylvanas. Will not quite find it. Arth now coming to try to make this an even fight. Kira taking a little bit of extra damage versus Rexar, but Rexar very low mana right now. We'll have to be careful. Mongoose taking a lot of damage here. Moving back. Johanna's health pool still very high. Shui waiting around in the mid lane, looking for an opportunity to snag that Dragon Knight, but it looks like the Nexus Cats have controlled this bottom shrine. Rexar still ailing for mana there in the top lane. We'll be looking for a tap soon. Looks like there's the throw. Mark Zombie just trying to control this space. The root is out. That's a big root onto Shui, but the Haunting Wave is there in time. The counter silence onto Orphea is enough for a kill. Mark Zombie on the retreat as well. Is there going to be enough damage? Yes, there will. And that's two kills for Regen Ghost onto Orphea and Garrosh. The haunting wave almost catching Artha now there, but Zeratul will survive. Turner has to commit to this point, but with Rexar just sitting there with Misha, it looks like Andrew will manage to channel this Dragon Knight, and Regen Ghost picks up the first objective of the game. McGiblet's working on the solo defense in the bottom lane as Garrosh and Orphea attempt to catch up. A lot of damage going into this bottom fort wall. Mongoose getting punished there by the Doctor. Shui gets the short haunting wave to escape. Looks like the defense is there. The Dragonite working on this middle wall, still very healthy. 
As now we see Zeratul working on the damage as much as possible. But here comes the rest of the cats trying to get some damage onto this Dragon Knight. Just to not give up this mid lane for free. Kira actually getting kicked away into tower range. Gonna have to retreat there. The rest of the squad. There's the root onto Johanna. The Iron Skin popped once again. Still unstoppable. There's the stun. There's the medallion. Is that gonna be enough damage? Yes, Johanna will go down. A great chase by the Doctor. Does manage to pick up yet another Johanna kill. This Dragon Knight about to expire. Is Stukov gonna be in a little bit of trouble here? There's the throw and... The root is down. Andrew gonna be taken out. Level 10s have arrived, but just not soon enough for Regen Ghost as we see the deafening, or the, what is it? Wailing Arrow. Deafening Blast is later for the Sylvanas. We do have the Boars for Rexar, Blessed Shield, Flailing Swipe, and Cursed Bullet to round out the heroics of Regen Ghost. Regen Ghost gonna go ahead and pick up that Siege Camp. Zeratul working on the hard camp. Actually taking a lot of damage here. Gonna have to be careful here. Waiting for that cleave cooldown. Goodness me. Making sure everyone's okay. <laughs> Making sure that camp doesn't reset Zeratul. I don't think he could have taken another auto attack there as we see Regen Ghost starting the bruiser camp of their own. Looking at the heroics as I go ahead and freeze out. Wait for that to come on back. Man. Been dropping frames like crazy tonight. Sorry about that, folks. It is going to be Void Prison. It will be Crushing Jaws. The final strike from Kira. As we have a little bit of an evade here, this could be a good fight onto Mark Zombie, and the silence is enough for Garrosh to fall here. The silence arrow is good onto Orphea and Malfurion, but the Void Prison is enough. Doesn't manage to drop it in time for the Crushing Jaws to land, but a good enough defensive Void Prison to let the rest of the Nexus Cats escape. It is the silence and the taunt rounding up the heroics of the Nexus Cats. Regen Ghost looking for a two-structure advantage here, taking out this bottom fort. Shrines are activating once again. Martha now just trying to put a lot of extra damage onto this back line. That will only get higher and higher as Zeratul reaches level 16 and ultimately level 20. This could be a risky bottom camp here for Regen Ghost. Arthur now looking to cut off the retreat. The root is good, popping the iron skin, but the taunt follow up with the silence onto Stukov. That's going to be a double kill onto Johanna and Stukov. A great little flank there by the Nexus Cats. Once again, it's going to be Kira versus Rexar. The mana situation has reversed. Kira's a little bit ailing now. As we now see the bottom lane, Bruiser Camp is taken by the Cats that will draw some tower aggro. This will definitely help them secure this bottom shrine if they can take these towers out. Turd Herder doing a good job of regenning off of Misha, but without the mana, it will be a tough to keep on trading there. Meanwhile, bottom wall is being taken out by the remaining members of the Nexus Cats, but Johanna and Stukov are back on the field. They're going to have to be careful not to overstay their welcome here. Mark Zombie rotating around. The Crushing Jaws forces Andrew back, but Orphea nonetheless is taken down by the Diving Braymane. Great job by Dub C 613 Oh, the Void Prison onto three is good. Looks like it will just be used to retreat. Once again, Regen Ghost controlling both top and bottom lanes. We'll see if Nexus Cats can stop a channel here as Shui is moving up to try to capture. Kira once again being forced back. The Boars is out. Can Turd Herder get away? Yep, it looks like the Raven will not come down. And now the fight over the mid shrine is here. Arthur now using the blink to get some damage onto the Grey Main. Curse Bullet committed. And it is enough to secure the second dragon of the game. Level 13s are here for both squads. We do see the virulent reaction from Stukov, that big playmaker, as they barrel down this middle lane. That Stukov silence, very, very difficult to defend through. As the entire Nexus Cat squad is here. Dragon Knight looking for the kick, but the Indomitable is good. There's the throw onto Misha. Big silence as well. They were looking for the pick there. Unfortunately, no one to be found. It looks like they have pushed away. Regen goes to the bottom lane. Trying to work on this bottom wall. Rexar still in the top lane, getting a sizable XP advantage here. Dragonite gets stuck on the wall. There's the root onto Sylvanas. We'll use that haunting wave to escape the justice 
of the crushing jaws of Orphea. Rexar still working solo in that top lane. Nexuscats are looking for an invade here. That's a big bullet onto Artha now. Does manage to blink out before the silence lands. The commitment is there, though. Mark Zombie taking a whole lot of damage, and Garrosh is going to go down. Once again, the Void Prison used defensively to try to escape. Nisha is out and gets that kill onto Zeratul. That's two kills for Regen Ghost. Doctor and McGiblet's trying to escape the wrath of Rexar. Regen Ghost start really starting to take control of things. Taking a look at the XP tab. They are ahead in Hero XP. Starting to really get ahead. That passive XP is starting to add up. That six structures to four is going to start making a whole lot of difference as we get into the late game here. The Giblets could be in some trouble here. The silence route from Stukov is good and Malfurion's going to go down. And now with the Black Arrows up, Regen Ghost with the double siege camp is trying to push down this bottom lane. They have the level 16 advantage. They're in a 4v3 situation. Mark Zombie looking for the throw. Crushing Jaws is out onto Shui. Mark Zombie would look for the taunt. Did not manage to land. That's a big minion wave that Nexus Cats are trying to work through here. Looks like the defense is good though. Bottom Keep still has some health remaining. Rexar working on the Bruiser Camp on the right side for Regen Ghost. The Regen Ghost is absolutely in the driver's seat here. Nexus Cats looking for pick opportunities, looking for rotation opportunities. But they, what they definitely need here is levels. They may be running out of time though. Shrines are starting to activate. Mongoose does scout Mark Zombie in the bush. Turd Herder trying to ward away. The members of Regen Ghost. It looks like they may not finish this camp early enough, but the route is good. But Garrosh caught on the wrong side of the terrain. The camp is taken, but the tank is lost. Dragon shrines in the top and bottom lane are active. It looks like Rexar is going to be heading to cap that top shrine. The rest of Regen Ghost is going to be rotating down to the bottom lane. Rotating very aggressively, not letting Nexus Cats step out at all, though we are now on even talent tiers for our two squads. Turd Herder in the top lane trying to face down Rexar and a full bruiser camp. While the rest of Regen Ghost is actually caught in the uh, in the Void Prison. This time the combo is good, the silence is out. Andrew trying to get away here, the counter silence onto Orphea is enough though. And that's Regen Ghost picking up another kill, another pair of roots underneath the keep. Gonna put some extra damage onto Shui. Sylvanas haunting wave to get on out of there. Bottom keep is down. Rexar still controlling the top lane, so it looks like Regen Ghost will not be pushing core here with just the one kill. But they will be retreating to this bottom shrine, and they may be picking up another Dragon Knight here. This Turd Herder actually getting some stacks onto both Misha and Rexar. Can Rexar maintain this point for long enough? Litterock on a little bit of low health here. The final strike comes out, but will not land. And Rexar managing to stay on the point for long enough to secure yet another Dragon Knight here for Regen Ghost. Kira's going to stick around in the top lane, try to find some extra XP for the Nexus Cats. There's the throw onto Shui. The taunt is good. The silence is out. The root is down. Is that going to be enough for Sylvanas? No, the Banshee Queen uses the Unstoppable to try to get away. Zeratul actually take it out by the Q of Rexar. This could be trouble for the Nexus Cats. The Dragonite's still very full health. That's a lot of damage on the Mark Zombie. Garrosh is going to go down here. And Regen Ghost wants the core. Turd Herder looks like it's going to take out Misha. Rexar in the back getting harassed by the Doctor, but the core shielding is gone. There's a lot of low members here on the side of Regen Ghost. Core at 60%, but Johan is going to go down here. Doctor still very high health. Litterock is down. Shui rotating around the core at 10%. It looks like it will be enough. Regen Ghost are going to even up this series at 1-1. GG. Very strong showing from Regen Ghost there, taking game number two on Dragonshire. Johanna once again showing the value against first against Kel'Thuzad in game number one and showing the value of against Garrosh there in game number two. Those iron skins just absolutely ruining the plans of the Nexus Cats to find those picks. 
Nevertheless, it looks like the Doctor leading the way for the Nexus Cats on Orphea with the hero damage Greymane. Actually eking out ahead of Sylvanas, WC613, stepping ahead of Shui on the hero damage in the very last seconds there. Very nicely played from both of our squads, but Regen Ghost is looking fantastic through that whole game. Take a look at the talents as we get prepared for game number three. All right, game number two is in the books. The series tied at 1-1. We're going to be going to game number three. But before that, we're going to go to a quick break. But don't go far. Nexus Cats versus Regen Ghost. Game number three is coming at you. Don't go far. All right, we are back. Game number three about to be underway. This series tied up 1-1 between the Nexus Cats and Regen Ghost. And as you just heard, Tomb of the Spider Queen is our next map. Before we get into that, I'll remind you of the map situation real fast. Hanamura Temple, Haunted Mines, Towers of Doom, Praxis Holdout, Sky Temple, and Infernal Shrines are all banned away for this series. Nexus Cats won game number one on Battlefield of Eternity, but Regen Go struck back with a win on Dragonshire. And now we are going to Tomb of the Spider Queen for game number three. Let's get into the draft and see how these two teams begin to stack up. Blaze is banned away by the Nexus Cats. Understandable. Blaze has been doing some work this series. Shui doing some good things there in game number one. And the extra wave clear and point control that Blaze provides. Absolutely valuable here on Tomb. May once again banned away by Regen Ghost. I get the feeling that we're not going to see the Ice Princess here in this series. As it's been the first ban for three games in a row here. Pi Regen Ghost. Nexus Cats thinking about their next ban here. It is going to be ETC. No chance to see the big guitar playing Torrin either. And now we see Regen Ghost thinking about their second ban. See if Cassia makes their way through. We did see her banned in both the previous series. It is going to be Anduin banned away by, uh, by Regen Ghost, interestingly enough. And looks like Johanna is the tank of choice being controlled by our teams. Mark Zombie going to snap that up straight away. Johanna still pretty much the queen of the rotation when it comes to clearing waves. So not surprising at all to see Mark Zombie pick that up. Dub C613 is going to snatch away that Orphea. Not letting the Doctor pick that one up, and Andrew will take the opportunity to play Stukov again. Doing some fantastic work there in game number two with those silences. And with such a small map as Tomb of the Spider Queen, not a lot of room to work, that silence becomes that much more effective. The Doctor is going to grab Sylvanas, and McGiblet's going to grab Deckard. So a lot of counter-drafting going on for our two squads here. Making sure that neither team can just settle into a rhythm here. Regen Ghost thinking about their third ban. Tassadar still a possibility to be taken. Gonna ban away the Zool. Tomb of the Spider Queen, name of the game was Wave Clear, and no one Wave Clears quite like a Zool. It's absolutely a ban that makes sense there. Posture check has been called. Oh. Thank you, Buffalo. Oh. And Malthiel is going to be banned away from Regen Ghost. Malthiel can get some particular value on Tomb just for his ability to take those camps solo and dart around such a small map with relative ease. So definitely a strong solo lane ban there coming out from the Nexus Cats. Cassia will be picked up by Litterok, and Shui is going to be playing Leoric. That's the first time we get to see the Skeleton King in this series. Excited to see what Shui can do on the Bone Man. Nexus Cats with our final two picks here. Looking at... Wouldn't be surprised to see Arthur now on the Vala again. It is going to be the Tychus this time. Going to try to put some extra damage into that front line. And Turd Herder is going to go ahead and grab Malganus. Now this could be the fabled offlane Malganus. 
didn't really take hold in the meta, but it has been played to some efficacy in some of these series that I've cast in the past. Very interesting that we've got this double frontline setup. I don't think I've seen Nexus Cats play with this style yet. See what they can do with that. Mongoose with the final pick is going to go ahead and grab the Diablo. Diablo able to really control space on a small map like Tomb of the Spider Queen. Lots of walls to bang people into. Lots of space that he can traverse. Good last pick there. All right. Nexus Cats versus Regen Ghost. The series is tied 1-1. One of these teams is going to pull within one match of victory. Let's get into Tomb of the Spider Queen. Here we go. All righty. Posture has been checked. Water was refilled. Mm -mm -mm. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Tychus, I'm looking at the Tychus. Definitely, in retrospect, a strong pick into the Diablo, but was picked before the Diablo. Also into a Cassia. We'll see how much Arthur now can do on the Dashing Terran. But here we go. Game number three is set to begin. Once again, on the left in the blue is the Nexus Cats, with Arthanau playing the Tychus. Turd Herder is on the Johanna. Actually, those switched up. Mark Zombie is actually on the Melganus. The Doctor playing Sylvanas, and McGiblets is on the Deckard. They switched on me again, man. On the right in the red, Regen Ghost. Mongoose playing the Diablo. Andrew on the Stukov. Litterock playing Cassia. Shui on the Leoric and Dubc613 on the Orphea. The overlays right this time. This time it was the Nexus Cats that tripped me up. They switched off. They switched it on me. <laughs> Here we're going to see a regen ghost trying to space out. They want to catch any Sylvanas shenanigans like this one, as it looks like the Nexus Cats are going to try to cheese this bottom tower. Regen ghost starting to move down. Mark Zombie looking to get the sleep in the background to try to peel away for the rest of the squad. Looks like the Nexus Cats, ooh, maybe not, won't get out of there. Mark Zombie still had that last Q. Mark Mongoose is in a bunch of trouble here. Diablo is going to be just fine. Johanna in the top lane trying to get some extra soak in for the Nexus Cats. And it looks like they will get ahead with that little gambit. There's the sleep onto Diablo, but the zoning silence, will that be good enough? Mongoose using that shadow charge to get on out of there. 10 squats has been redeemed in the chat. We'll have to get that done during the next break. So we see Turd Herder and Shui actually on this rotation. So it won't be a Melganus off lane. It'll be a Johanna off lane. Interestingly enough, we've got 4v4 in the bottom with a double soak. This is not a strategy we often see here on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Normally it's 1v1 in the bottom lane and a rotating 4v4. So interesting that our two teams have fallen into these rotations. There's the stun onto the Doctor. The silence is good. It looks like Mongoose may be the one in trouble, though, as Diablo will fall as first blood. Johanna still rotating well with the Leoric. Leoric, without that Neil Peasants on four, will not be able to double so quite as effectively. But once level four comes around, Leo definitely picks up the speed there. Doctor and Arthur now working on this neutral siege camp in the bottom lane. Diablo has made it back to the field. The Giblets and Mark Zombie trying to zone away the rest of Regen Ghost. Andrew is going to spot this. Diablo is on the way. I don't think they're going to get here in time, though, as the Nexus Cats do pick up the camp. Mark Zombie with the double sleep, but may have gone too far. There's the medallion, but it won't be enough. Malganus goes down. Diablo in a lot of trouble again. That extra damage from the Doctor really punishing the Diablo on that front line, using that dagger build to great effect. There is the Neil Peasants for Shui. That's definitely going to help out Leoric in that double soak matchup. Turd Herder turning in 24 for the Cats. Wraithwalk is there. Leoric is going to get away just fine. The Doctor could be in some trouble here, but the Haunting Wave is good and Sylvanas will escape. Mongoose sees Mark Zombie on the rotation. Mark Zombie actually catching Diablo in a sleep. A nice check there using that Night Rush. And these teams are just going to pretty much stick around in the bottom lane here. I must say I'm surprised to see this. 
Neither team wanting to give this up, though. The double soak has been good. Both teams pretty even on these gems. Mark Zombie looking for a sleep target, will not find anyone just yet. Mongoose looking for a flip, but will not find one either. These two teams just passing things back and forth. One on 1v1 one one on the kills, very, very even on the experience as we see here. And we're just kind of going back and forth. Arthur now on the Tychus is going to go ahead and try to start up the Bruiser Camp for the Nexus Cats. Looks like McGiblets is going to go ahead and help out Arthur now with that health pool. Regen Ghost sees they have the opportunity to try to turn in some of these gems. Mark Zombie will not be able to interrupt in time. Only five more gems needed for Regen Ghost on this first turn in. Eleven more gems needed for the Nexus Cats. Mark Zombie will use those fill claws to get on out of there, and the Red Web Weavers will be coming down the lanes. Leoric did sneak that top turn in. So it's going to be a Red Web Weaver phase to start things off. As level 7 has arrived for both squads. Descend, my daughters. Descend. Bruiser Camp will be cleared away by Regen Ghost. They did not pick up their own Bruiser Camp as we see the Nexus Cats trying to rotate, but Shui is hot on their heels. Looks like it'll be a full defense here. Looking for kills, actually. Mongoose uses the Shadow Charge to get out, but the Root still lands and Diablo's gonna go down. This is an often used strategy here on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Getting these Web Weavers cleared is a lot easier when the enemy is simply dead. So they do pick up that kill. They're gonna clear the mid wave. Gonna head down to the bottom while Johanna tries to clear up the top. And it looks like all three keeps are gonna be okay for now. Walls definitely being taken out here. Top wall, mostly intact. Bottom wall will be destroyed by this objective. Mark Zombie gets the double stun on the back line. Arthur now trying to catch up with that dash, but will not be able to close the distance. Shui is coming in for the flank. There's the sleep, though, and looks like the Nexus Cats will get out of there just fine. Big silence from Stukov is going to ward away the Doctor here. Johanna coming on down, trying to find a fight. Gets the dismount, but they will not find anyone in the Condemn. Ooh, actually, the sleep on the Mongoose is good. Looking for a route there. Will not land. Shui in some trouble, though. Had to pop out of that Wraithwalk early. And the full fight is on. It's a full 5v5, level 8 versus 8 in the bottom lane. Nexus Cats. Just needs 11 more to turn in. Looks like Johanna's going to go ahead and try to turn it in the top lane. Just going to go ahead and clear this wave. Arthanel does not have enough gems alone for this turn in, and Shui is there in time for the interrupt. Turd Herder could be in a little bit of trouble here. Is completely surrounded. The silence is out. The flip into the silence is good. A giant body block, and Turd Herder is going to go down. Mark Zombie trying to move in and pick up these gems and use the sleep to get on out of there. I don't know if Mark Zombie gets out of here. He's out of tools. The Fell Claws... Oh, he did have the Fell Claws in time. Mongoose not able to get the stun. The Doctor trying to move on in. Arthur now moving forward to try to get this kill onto Mongoose. McGiblets <laughs> trying to get the fadeaway route. And amazingly, the Nexus Cats save these gems. Regen Duke Ghost doing a fantastic job in guarding these turn-in points. Shui is going to dump the 25 gems in the top lane. And the guard on the bottom lane is good, though level 10 is here for the Nexus Cats. They have a very slight advantage on these levels so far. See if they can find this fight. They do find Leoric. Unstoppable Wraithwalk is out. Level 10s are here for Regen Ghost, so it is a full heroic fight. Oh, the Entomb is good. The Carrion Swarm is there in time, though. It looks like Malganus will be able to bats on out of there. Once again, a ton of extra damage onto Mongoose with that dagger build. There's the huge sleep, and it's actually going to be a falling sword from Turd Herder getting the big knockup. Diablo's going to go down, but Sylvanas killed in response. We're in a 4v4. Litterock taking a ton of damage. That's Cassia down. Turd Herder down in response. Shui will be next to fall. Mark Zombie's looking very low, but it will be Dub C613 falling next. It is a 4 for 2. And the Nexus Cats get their turn in. That's a quad kill for Artha now. Look at that Tychus go. That fight was 
just down to the global. Everyone's super low health, getting killed back and forth, but ultimately just a little bit of extra damage on the side of the Nexus Cats produces those extra kills. They get their turn in, and they're going to see what they can do about these structures. Odin will be popped by Tychus to start this siege. It is a four-player commit to the bottom lane. Johanna working on the mid lane push. Bottom fort is turned off by the Sylvanas Black Arrows. It looks like Regen Ghost is going to give up the bottom lane. And go ahead and try to stop Turd Herder in the mid. Bottom fort is going to go be going down to this wave, and the Nexus Cats are going to be rotating to the middle. Top Web Weaver already taken out. Bottom Web Weaver, the only one remaining. Nexus Cat's actually looking for an aggressive rotation, but Regen Ghost will be rotating around safely to the back side. Shui will go ahead and clean this up as the rest of Regen Ghost looks to defend their mid fort. Mark Zombie right in the thick of things. There's the Apocalypse that'll get the stun onto. Malganus, but Carrion Swarm is out. A big sleep onto four. An extra follow-up sleep by Mark Zombie. Looks like Malganus will get out of there just fine. Nexus Cats will manage to retreat. They do have enough gems here for a double turn-in. Mark Zombie and McGibbless trying to get those gems off, but Shui is on the chase. Will not manage to stop here. The Entomb is out onto two, though. Mongoose is in the thick of things. Eternal Feast. The Silence is there as well. Deckard and Malganus are going to go down. It's going to be another blue Web Weaver wave, but with two dead... Regen Ghosts are going to have the opportunity to clean this up very quickly. Turd Herder moving to the top lane, but so is the rest of Regen Ghosts. This could be trouble for Johanna. There's the stun. There's the flip. The Unstoppable is out. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Johanna's going to go down, and that's 15 gems on the ground. The Doctor moving ahead, trying to get some extra damage. Will manage to mount up. It looks like Regen Ghost is just working on this top lane clear. Leoric working on cleaning things up in the bottom lane. Mid fort. Uh, it's going to be close. The wave is going to start focusing this fort. And there it goes. Mid fort is down. So that is a two structure advantage going over to the Nexus Cats. That trickle XP will start to add up as we get towards level 20 here. Alganus looking to watch this rotation. Leoric still in the bottom lane. Park Zombie looking for the sleep, but didn't find it quite in time. Johanna is back on the field. Regen Ghost does have enough for their next turn in. Mark Zombie looking to catch out on the rotation. There's the Falling Sword onto two. Dub C613 very low. Orphe is going to go down and so is Cassia. That's all the damage of Regen Ghost taken out. Andrew with the Flailing Stripe trying to get away. Mark Zombie hits that Carrion Swarm to get that chase. And that's 25 gems down. I think Shui managed to pick it up. Oh, only managed to pick up some. I think that's... At least five on the ground. But still with plenty of gems is Regen Ghost. They're going to be able to get their next turn in when they need to. Mark Zombie have to be a little bit careful there. They're thinking about the boss. They did manage to get some extra kills. But they will be back on the field soon. It looks like they're going to take the opportunity and go ahead and grab this top boss. Meanwhile, Regen Ghost is going to go ahead and pick up this Bruiser Camp. But they will not be able to contest the top boss as Andrew is just getting back onto the field now. Nice job by Regen Ghost taking advantage of that Falling Sword pick to jump right on the back line, land the Silence Arrow, and pick up those extra kills. Mark Zombie trying to deny the turn in in the bottom lane. Nexus Cat's still quite a ways away from their next turn in. They're going to have to keep a weather eye on both spots, but with these lanes pushed out as far as they are, Regen Ghosts are going to have a real tough time sneaking in a turn in. They're going ahead and trying to clear up this top boss. It's going to be going down rather quickly. Looks like Nexus Cats are going to go ahead. Arth now starting up that Bruiser Camp. Getting the gems off them while they can are the Nexus Cats. Top boss is cleared away. But these lanes pushed in means that Regen Ghost is going to have to start pushing out these lanes if they want any opportunity to turn in. Nexus Cat's absolutely in the driver's seat here. Taking a look at the experience. You see that passive experience really starting to add up. A huge minion experience lead for Regen Ghost, but that the mercenary lead 
and the trickle XP lead means that we see level 16 to 15 here for the Nexus Cats. Turd Herder, keeping an eye on the top turn in. Mark Zombie, keeping an eye on the bottom turn in. As Nexus Cats slowly amass their coin count once again. Regen Ghost really just stuck clearing here. Shui has enough to turn in solo with the 33 gems. But they're going to have to bait Nexus Cats up to either top or bottom lane to allow Leoric to turn in unabated. Looks like they're just going to go ahead and have to take a fight if they do want to turn in here. They're on even talent tiers, though they have more gems to lose if they do take the fight, so Regen Ghost is in a little bit of a tricky scenario now. Just moving around the map, trying to get the clear, trying to get these lanes pushed back to neutral. And the Nexus Cats are just kind of stuck here. They're just rotating around, trying to keep their XP advantage. They're absolutely going to be moving faster towards level 20. Since they're now at six structures to three, Mark Zombie catches Regen Ghost. They are committing to this bottom turn-in. I don't know if the rest of the cats are going to be here to stop this. They got caught in the top lane, and Regen Ghost are going to get their turn-in and try to use this objective to get these lanes pushed back out to neutral. Looks like the cats are just rotating around, trying to make sure they're not going to get flanked. Here comes the Web Weavers. They're going to be stopped very short in all three lanes. Nexus Cat's going to work on the mid-clear first. Mark Zombie just keeping an eye on things, making sure they're not getting flanked from the top side. There's the Entomb onto two, though. Eternal Feast is out along with the Apocalypse. Decker going down straight away. That's Eternal Feast is still rolling. Leoric is going to go down next. The Carrion Swarm does land. It's a one-for-one for, one for now, but that's a Leoric for a Decker. Nexus Cats are going to have to retreat here without their healer. They still have their mid-fort to retreat to, so they will manage to get away. A regen Ghost with a fantastic Entomb there, taking advantage and taking out the healer of the Nexus Cats. Now with their hero advantage, they're going to be barreling down the top lane, trying to even out this building count. Bottom fort is taken out by the objective. Johanna down there trying to work on the clear. Looks like top fort is going to be taken out by the remainder of regen Ghost. Deckard is about back on the field, but with this top web weaver still alive, they won't be able to retreat to boss just yet. Nexus Cat's just working on this defense. They've still got a perfectly healthy wall to work with. Objective is taken out. There's the Falling Sword. Onto two. Dub C613 is slept. Leoric falls first. Dub C613 is trying to get out of there, but Orpheus is going to fall. That's two kills for the Nexus Cats. They're on the chase here. They want this Stukov. Turd Herder mounting up. arthanow has got the dash. Andrew trying to move around. There's the big sleep by McGiblets. Just in case, Stukov's going to go down. That is three kills here for the Nexus Cats. Still 40 seconds on the boss. They're going to go ahead and rotate down, trying to get this turn in. They have just barely enough for a blue Webweaver phase. Let's see if they do that. It looks like they're going to go ahead and invade this Bruiser camp. They go ahead and pick that up while they have the opportunity. Still 34 seconds on the Stukov. So they're going to get this steal. We'll see whether they want to push this keep or whether they want to move on back. Turd Herder. Just getting this clear, trying to make sure the regen ghost is really stuck dealing with this bruiser camp. While the rest of the cats working on their turn in. The Giblets is going to go ahead and start the uh, siege camp in the bottom lane. Mark Zombie does have enough for the turn in. Boss is up and available. It looks like they won't make these ultra greedy play. Mark Zombie will manage to get the turn in. Bottom Siege is captured, and we have a pretty effective push coming in from the Cats. They've got level 20, they've got the camp in the bottom lane, the lanes are pushed in. Regen Ghost is really in for it here with this defense. Mark Zombie, once again, they're just covering all the angles. They want to make sure that they don't get caught. Odin is popped. And it's going to be a full 5v5 in this bottom lane. Siege Camp is starting to catch up. Keep all taken out. Webweaver isn't even here yet. And the Nexus Cats are clearing this wave and they want to start pushing into this keep. The defense is here. Level 20 is still not close here for Regen Ghost. They're going to have to be careful not to get caught out, but there have been some big money in tombs coming out from Shui. Shui's working on those angles, looking for any sort of opportunity. Bottom keep is taken out. Webweaver still very healthy. Looks like 
Nexus Cats are just going to move to the mid lane. They want to create some space here. They're going to work on this mid keep. There's a huge sleep coming out for Mark Zombie. The Carrion Swarm is there. Big sleep coming out as well from the Decker. Diablo and Leoric are going to go down here. So is Orphea. Andrew taken out as well. Litterock is the only one left alive. Diablo's back in the base and the Nexus Cats complete their final push and take out the core and take game number three. GG. Both teams playing a very measured, very calculated Tomb of the Spider Queen there in a very interesting style. We don't normally see the double soak style on Tomb of the Spider Queen anymore, but both teams settled into it very nicely. Very even early game, but Nexus Cats just finding the edge in a couple of those team fights, getting ahead, staying ahead, and ultimately putting together just an impossible situation for Regen Ghost. The siege camp, the lanes all pushed in with the objective, level 20, and Nexus Cats put the stamp on game number three. Once again, the Doctor leading the way for the Nexus Cats on the hero damage. Almost 54,000 coming out from Sylvanas. And Cassia doing some work with the 41,000 hero damage done by Litterock. 17 kills to 8 there in game number 3. Make a quick stop over at the talent screen. And then we're going to be setting up game number 4. All right. Ontological, I didn't forget about you. Before we go to the break, I owe you 10 squats. So let's go ahead and start that up. All righty. Set up here. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten squats. Just for you, Ontological. Thanks for spending those bananas. It looks like we may already have a lobby starting out. So I may have just squatted my way through the break. So you won't even get to see the break screen. How sad. You know what? We're going to go ahead and start up the music once again. A little bit of a banana swirl. And that's how it starts the music. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and update my map screen. It is going to be Volskaya Foundry for game number four. Picked by the Nexus Cats. Fantastic stuff. Another 10 squats have been redeemed, my goodness. They're putting me through, putting me through the ringer today. Let me just make sure everything's good to go. All right, good. I'll let the teams know that I am ready. Ready. Whenever you are. All right. Is that an untucked shirt? It is. I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> Classic esports at home, business up top, airy down below. <laughs> All right, looks like our teams are about ready. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you the maps. I'll take you to the draft screen and I'll give you your squats. Towers of Doom, Sky Temple, Praxis Holdout, Infernal Shrines, Hanamura Temple, and Haunted Mines will not be played today. They've been banned away by our two squads. Battlefield of Eternity game number one was won by the Nexus Cats. Regen Ghost came storming back, winning game number two onto Dragonshire. And then Tomb of the Spider Queen was taken by the Nexus Cats. And we're going to be going to Volskaya Foundry for game number four. Let's get into the draft. Let's get into these squats as we see the bands coming out for our two teams. Let's do some squat casting. One. Two. Regen Ghost thinking about their first ban. Three. Four. We are on a little bit of a more standard map here. 
on Volskaya Foundry. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. That's for you, Broom Boy One. As we see once again, Regen Ghost gonna be banning away the May. Ban away. ETC banned away by the Nexus Cats. Joe Zombie, thank you very much for the follow. Regen Ghost thinking about their second ban here on Volskaya Foundry. As I take a pull on my water there. It is going to be Garrosh banned away once again, not wanting to see Mark Zombie on the Warchief. That's a lot of tank bans. We got three tank bans coming out so far. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Deckard ban. This is probably Deckard's best map here. See if they're willing to give it away first pick. It is going to be the Johanna ban, so they're really choking down on these tanks. This will be the first game we don't see a Johanna played. Drink water streamer has been redeemed. Oh. Oh. Welcome, Linehouse. Glad you're enjoying yourself. Thank you very much, Masked Introvert. Really thinking about that first pick, it is going to be the Deckard. Andrew conceding the Stukov in order to pick up the old man. McGiblet says, don't mind if I do. And the doctor is going to snap pick that Kael'thas. Done some great work on the Fire Mage thus far this season. As I go ahead and update my heroes. There we go. There we go. So we're talking Deckard. Usually we're talking something like a Tassadar. Get some good splash damage into those roots. I'm interested to see whether we're going to see Diablo here. Follow up with that combo. Mongo's actually gonna snap the Anubarak pick. Anubarak Beetle build did get updated recently, bringing the uh, bringing the Crypt Lord back into the meta just a little bit. But getting those double stuns is always in vogue. Sylvanas gonna be banned away by the Nexus Cats. Not interested in playing it themselves. They're gonna take it away from the enemy squad. The Butcher. He is banned by Regen Ghost. I think they smelled something. I think there was something in the air. They smelled some fresh meat and they said, No, we're not going down to that level in Diablo, which was level two or three, but I can't remember. Arth now going to go ahead and snap up that Vala pick that he plays so very well. And Turd Herder going to go ahead and snap up the Leoric. I'm going to need a mop, a brow mop here. Goodness me. You guys are making me work for it today. Ah. Linehouse, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate the support. Sonya going to be picked by Shui to counter that Leoric and Litterock on the Falstad. Interesting. So they've got some options in the off lane here. And Mark Zombie is going to round things out on Arthas. Did I get everything here? I did. All right. So, once again, heroes swapping sides an awful lot here in this draft. But it is going to be game number four. Nexus Cat's looking to close this thing out, and Regen Ghost looking to force a game number five. Let's get into it here on Volskaya Foundry. Here we go. All righty. Volskaya Foundry. We've got the Leo versus the... Could be Falstad. Could be Sonya. Regen Ghost has a very flexible comp here. A little bit more of a classic comp with a uh, with an Arthas Kicker coming out from the Nexus Cats. Interested to see who's going to control this map. And let's get into game number four. Here we go. Once again, on the left in the blue are the Nexus Cats with Arthanau playing the Vala. The Doctor is on the Kael'thas. Turd Herder playing Leoric. McGiblet's on the Stukov. And Mark Zombie 
Look at that rad new Arthas skin. Look at that. Fantastic. King of Blades. On the right in the red, we have Regen Ghost with Mongoose on the Anubarak. Dub C613 on the Tassadar. Litterok playing Falstad. Andrew on the Deckard. And Shui. Shui Shui Victory on the Sonya. Here we go. Volskaya Foundry is underway. Deckard working a setup in this mid lane. Both teams just waiting for the connection here. Leoric already down in the bottom lane. Shui looking for a possible engage onto the cats here. Looks like Arthur now looking to clear here. Does evade the stun combo coming out from Mongoose. That's a big root there. Arthur now trying to get some extra damage onto the bug. Mark Zombie looks like. Ooh, we'll manage to make it out there with the help of that medallion. And now the rotation begins. We don't have a four bot lane anymore. There's the stun onto Anubarak with the follow-up route. The silence is good, and Anubarak will be the first blood of this game. Very nice little CC combo coming out from the cats. They're going to go ahead and start to work on this rotation. It will be Sonya versus Leoric in the bottom lane for now. Falstad trying to get ahead on the rotations here for Regen Ghost. While the rest of the cats work on the clear here. Shui starting to push back Leoric. Once again, Leo kind of needs that level 4 to match the wave clear of Sonya. As both teams now, if I can get it on the screen. Oh, oh geez, Falstad. Litterock, you gotta be careful, buddy. They're gonna go ahead and pick up their turret camps. Litterock gonna go ahead and back. Getting beaten up by that poor little turret. And the rotations once again continue. Shui getting pushed back a little bit by Turret Herder. Nexus Cat's thinking about this heal camp. They're taking a very aggressive line here. Mongoose sees it happening. Andrew is here as well, but Falstad, it was a little bit late. I don't know if they're going to be able to get this clear fast enough. They're thinking about... They're trying to move in. Mark Zombie is working on zoning out. The static wall is there. It looks like Mark Zombie did manage to pick up the heal item. Look at that CC chain. Just beautiful coming out from the cats. Mongoose does manage to walk away, though. And a very aggressive call means that the healing item will be theirs for objective number one. Regen Ghost, looking to keep up these rotations, looking to stay relevant in this XP chase. Taking a look here, looks like they're actually quite far ahead on the minion XP here. A little bit behind on the mercenaries and heroes, but that can absolutely be caught up. There's a commit by Mongoose, looking for Mark Zombie. Arthas will manage to squeeze away for now. Still very, very even on XP going into this first control point. Falstad in the bottom lane with that global, of course, will be able to soak in the off lane a little better than Leoric here. Turd Herder coming down to try to even things out. Sonya in the top lane working on the clear, gonna go ahead and get that camp clear. Sonya may be in trouble though, because here comes the cats looking for the gank. Shui avoiding the damage for now. Mark Zombie is on the chase though. There's the root inside the silence. The body block is good, and Sonya is gonna go down. Very nice little rotation there by the Nexus Cats. Finds a kill. Regen Ghost is on the point, though. They're already up to 40% on this cap, so Nexus Cats are going to have to rotate down sooner rather than later. They do have this level 7 advantage. 50% on the objective. It looks like they will manage to get here in time. Falstad and Leoric still duking it out in the bottom lane. Sonya back on the field. Top is being cleared away by Dub C613. Level 7 is going to be here for Regen Ghost, and we're going to have the fight here. Falstad looking to move up. Healing item still available. Both teams have a turret. Turret is placed down by the Nexus Cats. Regen Ghost is going to say thank you very much and take that out. Mongoose taking some damage there in the mid lane from the Kael'thas. The healing item has been placed. 70% on this objective. And Anubrak is committing. There's the Unstoppable coming out. The Giblet's trying to get away. There's a lot of damage flying around. Stukov a little bit low here. Uses that trigger to heal back up. And Anubrak once again will fall here. 
And it looks like Regen Ghost is going to have to back out and give over this first protector of the game over to the Nexus Cats. Shui in the bottom lane trying to catch up on that XP. Turd Herder hot on her heels. And this protector will be heading straight to the top lane to try to soften up that top wall for control point B. There it is, putting that laser on top of the wall and the well. With almost a full level lead now, the Nexus Cat's looking very strong in the early game. The well's going to be taken out, front wall being worked on by the rest of the squad. Anubarak is now back on the field. Still working on this, uh, on this turret. The doctor trying to put some damage out on this Kael'thas. Looks like it will be enough. And the, uh... That's pretty much all you're looking to do with this first protector. Get the top wall, get the top well, and anything else is gravy. There's the fly. They're looking to possibly get a gank here onto Leoric. Level 10 is here for the cats, though. Regen Ghost is going to have to soak and try to pick up that experience and not take a heroic down fight. Playing carefully around the wall, playing safely is Regen Ghost. Going ahead and grabbing that turret. Nexus Cat's going to use this heroic advantage to take control of the heal camp once again. Regen Ghost just trying to soak as effectively as possible. It is going to be Phoenix coming out from the Kael'thas. Reign of Vengeance from Vala and Tomb from Leoric. Flailing Swipe from the Stukov. And Army of the Dead from Arthas. Regen Ghost heroics are almost here. And there they are. It's going to be the Cocoon for Anubarak, Mighty Gust from Falstad, Archon from Tassadar, the Mighty Leap from the Sonya, and Stay Wild and Listen from the Deckard. Nexus Cat's in a little bit of a precarious spot here. Do manage to wiggle away, or do they? The Giblets and the Doctor were trapped underneath this fort. There's the Sleep onto Kael'thas. Doctor popping that Arcane Barrier, but it won't be enough. Nexus Cat's getting a little bit split there, and there goes the Doctor. Regen Ghost is on the chase. Mongoose looking for the knockup onto Mark Zombie, but a very nice reign of vengeance for Martha now means the rest of the Nexus Cats are going to get away here. Kael'thas will be back on the field shortly, but this means Regen Ghost is starting to catch up on that XP, starting to rotate around the map, getting a little bit more map control here. Making things very, very even, heading into control point B. Vala absolutely leading the damage for Nexus Cats thus far with the 15k. On the other side of things, 15k for the Tassadar. Not far behind with 13k is the Falstad. So a lot of damage coming out from Regen Ghost in the early going here. The Auric working on the double soak as best as possible while the rest of the Nexus Cats push down the top lane. Looks like Turt Herder will avoid the gank for now. Mark Zombie has been noticed in that bush. Siege Camp trying to push down the top lane here. Shui is caught by the root. There's the CC chain coming out. That's a lot of damage onto Sonya. Caught inside the Entomb, and that's Sonya going down. Mongoose is committing, using that turret. Dub C613. Oh, almost taken out by Arthur now, moving in very aggressively. Litterock will get taken out by the fading away auto attack of the Vala. That's two kills for the Nexus Cats, and they're going to start pushing down this top fort. Oh, it looks like we have a player pause coming out from the Nexus Cats. Hopefully, we sort that out shortly. Into the game. Here we go. Everyone's back in comms. Two kills still on the board. Nexus Cats are going to be barreling down this top fort. They do have the level 13 advantage here as well. Control point B unlocking in about 10 seconds. Regen Ghost is going to be looking to close this gap in experience before they have to jump onto control point B. Stretch your hips has been called in the chat. We have to think about that between our next games. Mark Zombie just keeping an eye on things. Looking for a possible commit onto an Ubrak. There's the stun combo. The silence is out and that is enough to kill the bug. Shui uses the leap defensively to get on out of there. Mark Zombie has popped the Army of the Dead, staying nice and healthy. And that's another kill for the Cats. That's given them nearly a full level lead here. Leoric is going to step on the point. We're going to have a four-player push in the mid. Andrew with the sleep under the tower. They're looking for Mark Zombie here. 
angling around the big Deckard route. Phoenix is out. There's the there's the slowing wall from Tassadar once again. But so much damage going on to this mid fort. Looks like the Nexus Cats are thinking about picking this up. They don't have a minion wave anymore. Arthur now trying to finish this off. It looks like they won't quite get it. With Anubrak back on the field, they're going to have to retreat to this point. McGiblets is dismounted, though. Arthur now gets the Reign of Vengeance. McGiblets is being chased off by Litterock. Nexus Cats are a little bit split here. Turd Herder trying to ward away. Meanwhile, the Protector was picked up. Shui taking some damage there. Mongoose looking to peel away. And it looks like these teams are going to reset. Protector will be heading down to the bottom lane. Just after it finishes off this four. Look at that. Deckard getting back for mana. As we see the Protector going to start heading down to this bottom lane. Minion Wave isn't quite caught up. Turd Herder's going to work on that. Shui actually coming in trying to find the Doctor, but is ganked. McGiblet's there for the assist, and the Doctor is going to finish off Sonya. That's going to give Nexus Cats a big advantage pushing down this bottom fort. This Protector's still fairly healthy. Looking for the slam onto Litterock. There is the Entomb onto one. The big sleep from Andrew just in case. Saving the rest of Regen Ghost. Bottom fort is taken out. This Protector, only 12 seconds left on it. It's a long way back home. It looks like the Protector is going to start the long walk. Mongoose is there just in case. Protector starting to move around to the middle lane. Arthanow and Mark Zombie do pop out. Looks like the Nexus Cats are going to get away here. Regen Ghost is not done, though. There's the leap onto one. The Cocoon is out. Arthanow and McGibbless trying to get away. The Flailing Swipe is good. Mark Zombie still very healthy. Here comes Turd Herder. Looks like this may be a counter engage coming in from the Cats. Tassadar is going to fall first. Shui and Litterock getting away in the bottom lane. Andrew trying to walk over those potions. May not be so lucky. There's the Entomb onto two. Such big damage coming out from the percent of those flame strikes. That's Deckard, that's Anubarak down. And the Cats with level 16, they're looking for mid mid keep. Minion Wave is not quite caught up. There's the Mighty Gust. Just to try to buy time there, coming out from Litterock. Mid keep is almost certainly going down here, though. Still 13 seconds till Regen Ghost is back at full strength. Looks like the Nexus Cats are going to be happy with their mid-keep capture. They're going to retreat back to this turret camp. Regen Ghost, now three levels behind here. This is going to be a very tough remainder of the game. It's six structures to two. They're down on that trickle experience. They're going to have to start splitting into the lanes here. Nexus Cats are going to go ahead and get this double turret. Siege, Siege Camp is picked up by Regen Ghost. Cat's going to be rotating onto the heal camp as well, just trying to take as many mercenary camps as possible. Looks like they're going to start with the Siege Camp. Level 16, still a level away here for Regen Ghost. The one pick, one fight here, that catch-up XP is going to send them catapulting forward. So we'll see what they can do here. Leoric... Turd Herder pushing out that mid lane. Here come the cats. They're going to go ahead and pick up this heal camp. Regen Ghost sees the cats in the top lane. Looks like Mark Zombie's having a connection issue. We're going to try to go ahead and sort that out. Bring your beam. Yes. I am the king of downtime. We're so close. We've got the R's. Looking like we're about ready to go. Three, two, one. All right, we're back into it. The cat's trying to stabilize here. Siege Camp going to be pushing down the top lane. Regen Ghost responding in the bottom lane, trying to blunt that trickle XP, but they're going to have to back as the cats are moving straight onto this keep. They saw Regen Ghost on that bottom fort. They've all backed here. Sonya remaining on the bottom keep, actually. There's the Mighty Gust to try to pull them off. 
There's the sleep onto one. Turd Herder in the back line, reducing that damage. Andrew taking a whole ton of damage from that Kalefoss. The Entomb. Oh, Deckard, Deckard manages to wiggle on out of there. Top keep is gone. That Kael'thas damage with the three-level lead is something serious. Control, control point C, Shui is going to be on that for now, but the cats are coming in. Looks like Shui is on this push, but the cats see it. Oh, the leap from Shui! What a play. Okay, I gotta... Look at this. Look at this golden god. You see that leap? That was tremendous. Cats are going to control the point. Regen Ghost. They're looking for a fight. They don't have the heroics they need, though, but they need to find something before level 20 gets here for the cats, and they're going to go ahead and take their opportunity now. We do have the one heal camp for the cats. The doctor being keyed in by Shui. There's the Phoenix going out. Turd Herder in the back line. It's a lot of damage onto Litterock. There's the barrel roll. Looks like Falstaff will be okay for now. The root is good. Andrew and Dub C surviving for now. Nexus Cats are actually being pushed back here. There is the Cocoon onto Stukov. Mongo is taking some punishment, though. Level 20 is here. Anubarak is down. Shui in a world of trouble trying to retreat here, but the Cats are on the chase. Sonya is going to go down. There's the route onto Tassadar. Turd Herder trying to get the body blocks. It's going to be two kills for the Cats. Looks like they're going to try to back off here. Just go ahead and cap this objective. The Orc is back, starting the channel. The rest of the cats are pushing down this keep wall. Regen Ghost will be as five for the defense, but it'll be one heck of a defense. Mid lane is pushed in. Top lane is pushed in. Bottom lane is softened up. And the Protector is going to be barreling down the lanes. Oh, C613 is in some trouble here, and Tassadar is actually going to fall. Just that scaling is so much to handle. Here comes the Protector, Leoric bringing up the rear. The Nexus Cats are pushing onto the core. The Catapults are keyed. Six Catapults on the core here. Shielding is gone. We're down to 50%. Shui in the back line. Looks like the Cats are being... Pushed back a little bit here, but 25% on the core. Kael'thas is actually going to fall here. Litterock gets the clear. That's 22%. But two dead. Litterock does get the Mighty Gust. The Protector's still very, very healthy. And there it is. The Nexus Cats are your Zul'jin Distillery Invitational League Season 5 Champions. There it is, the final screen, Nexus Cats dominating map number four, 14 kills to two, and that seals the series. They win the best of five, and they win the grand finals. Congratulations to the Nexus Cats. Regen goes putting up one hell of a fight there, making things even there in game number two, fighting till the end, but ultimately the Nexus Cats are victorious. Taking a look at the final talent screen, and then we're going to get the last interview of the season with the Nexus Cats coming to you right now. Let's see if we can get the members of the Nexus Cats. It's, and here we are, Turd Herder. Hello, hello, hello. There you have it. Congratulations. You are the grand finals winner. Yeah, man, it feels uh, it feels okay. J That's it, gotta it feel actually, good. It feels it feels pretty good. <laughs> Fantastic work, coming in first place out of the regular season. Guys playing fantastically right through the end, and you come up big in the final series there. That's uh, man. Yeah. Um, Fantastic stuff. I this is our first best of five series. Um, and, uh, I think we all had a lot of fun with it. Um, obviously we apologize for the, the ping issues in, um, in that last game there, uh, would have rather not had those, but, 
um, yeah, we're feeling good um, going into, especially, I think all of us here in XGD kind of use this as a way to kind of keep fresh for the NGS regular season. Um, and you can't really be disappointed. If you're either team, you can't really be a bit disappointed about making it to the grand finals here and going into NGS. That's uh, it's going to feel pretty good, I think. Absolutely. Well, looking back on this season, we had quite a number of games, lots of back and forth. Was there anything uh, about this season that really stood out to you in uh, in comparison to possibly previous seasons or teams that you faced this season that, you know, you'd love to stay in touch with, that sort of thing? Um, we've always been really, really close with all of the teams in XGD. Um, a lot of them are Div D teams um, in NGS. Uh, it seems like they're now mostly Div C. Uh, Regen Ghost is Div B, I think, uh, for the most part. Um, so we've always been really close. I think on our end, and Gibbs, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but I think on our end, just we've had the same roster now for a full season. Um, we first started playing with it in the off season last season. We actually skipped XGD for that reason. Um, and it just kind of feels like everything's firing on all cylinders right now. Absolutely. You've been looking fantastic through the year, especially through the playoffs here. Oh yeah. Um, and that's what, that's part of what I mean by just like, you know, winning this year and then going on into NGS. Um, I think we're feeling pretty good. Absolutely. So taking a look at this series in particular, um, trying to think if I've got any big overarching questions here, because this was, uh, absolutely back and forth. Some great reactive drafting coming out from, uh, from both sides is the, uh, so talk to me a little bit about the ETC ban. We did see ETC nerf today, but it's really just the one talent. Is that just something that, you know, that, uh, regen ghost is looking to play? You're just not interested in playing against the big cow. What's the, uh, what's the idea there? I think that's mostly it. Um, so uh, from what I understand, and, and obviously I apologize if I'm wrong, but I, I think Mongoose played for Region Ghost primarily in the playoffs. Um, mm. I'm not sure that he played regular season. He may have, but he didn't. He certainly didn't play it against us. So we were kind of worried about him. Um, we know he's a very high level skilled player. Um, uh, you know, both he and I are on the NGS board. Um, so we, you know, talk a lot. I know he really likes ETC um, and if you just, you know, view his profile, that's pretty much all the um, reason you need to just say, you know what, let's just ban ETC here. Um, <laughs> and we got we, we got rid of that. And I I, I think while Mark plays ETC, I, I think we're very comfortable with an ETC ban on our side as far as like a choking tanks out perspective. So Absolutely. Definitely saw a pretty uh, consistent ban strategy from you there. Uh, one hero that seemed to dance around the bands and the high-level picks there was Deckard. Now, we did see a pretty uh, minor, I would call it a minor nerf to Ruby. Now, I'm not a healer myself, so I don't know how impactful that one was. It's a little bit noticeable, honestly. A little bit noticeable there? Okay. Yeah. So still, in your eyes, absolutely high-tier healer to be sought? If you, if you can hit 20 and you know you're going to hit 20, Perfect Jones is like the only pick at this point for me at least. Just five okay. second rubies instead of 20 seconds. Absolutely. Doing oh, some fantastic <laughs> stuff there. Deckard Kane absolutely bouncing back between both teams there, as well as Stukov. Um, definitely seemed to be a very contested pick there. For you guys, was is Stukov something that you are playing a lot of the time sort of when it's uncontested, or was that more pick it up to make sure that Andrew didn't go ahead and grab that away? You know, obviously it's to me and i'm not the team's drafter so it seems like our tank picks and our healer picks are sometimes kind of a dance um between what do we ban slash what do we play slash what do we not want them to have um and i, th I think this series was no different i think <clears throat> some of it was definitely andrew was a stukov uh problem in game two yeah uh, <laughs> Um, you know, very well played and it made us consider it, but obviously we let it through in game three. Um, so we were worried about it, but not scared of it, I would say. Okay. Okay. Now in the last game there, we saw the main tank Arthas coming out from Mark Zombie. Yeah. Now, would you say that the newest skin has made Arthas a great tank or the greatest tank? 
the greatest. Easy Honestly, greatest. <laughs> I mean, we, were, we were all admiring it when we were doing the pregame dances. And then even Mark said, like, man, like, I think it was like a minute into the game. He's like, man, this is like a really good skin. And I actually looked away from offlane. I was like, yeah, man, that is a really good skin. <laughs> um, so I, I, I definitely think it's pretty good. Uh, props to Blizzard uh, for still putting out really good content, um, even if it's not, you know, anything substantive. But, uh, you know, they're still really cool. Fantastic stuff. All right. Now, one thing that we did have in this series that we didn't have for the whole rest of the season was the new Gladiators and Medallion. I did see some uses as I was casting there. I, I seemed like it was responsible for a couple of saves. It looked like it was popped and ultimately didn't result in too many saves. How much did that affect your gameplay? Was it a big part of your comms? Were you able to sort of introduce it into your style as this series evolved? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first here really quick and then Gibbs, you can follow up. Uh, you know, we had we didn't play on the PTR. We had a couple games before this just as like a warm up. We actually did our placements. That was just about it. Um, played some ARAMs with it. And our messaging and comms was pretty much like, don't forget about it. Don't forget about it. Don't forget about it. And, and really, it's it is a long cooldown. So you don't want to burn it all the time. But we were mindful, especially in that Volskaya game, knowing about that point A, the call out was, if a noob digs, just medallion, just medallion, just medallion. And um, I think Gibbs actually got that off and was able to turn around and get a kill on a noob rack. And, and mm -hmm. that was really helpful. I know, I, I think generally it's just those that are maybe higher skill and able to hit more buttons more quickly uh, are going to benefit from it more. And those that can't are not. Um, I know I, I think I touched it once or twice. Uh, I tried to do it in that Joe body block on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but of course I was like ultra silenced and body blocked, so it uh, <laughs> didn't quite work. But Gibbs, what do you think? Uh, honestly, I forget that I have it half the time, but... There you go. I, I, usually, don't, I usually don't need it, honestly. <laughs> uh, if I'm playing far enough back, they shouldn't touch me, but... I oh, like we are day number it. one, so I mean, it, it'll be something that develops as the uh, as the weeks go on for sure. Oh, yeah. and I'm definitely and excited to see how uh, how competitive teams really work that into uh, to gameplay. So it was cool to see the series there with it today. Absolutely glad we can put on a show, man. It was quite a show today. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I got to see it. I'm glad I got to cast it. Um, yeah, so that that puts the that puts the crown on this season of the XGDI as we head into now season ten of uh, of NGS. Now, are is this squad of the Nexus Cats? Are you taking that directly into NGS? Yeah, this will be the core five. Okay, I believe I'm trying to remember. You guys are C East. We are a C this East. season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a promotion from uh, from last time. Are you looking forward to the new challenge? Yeah, you know the existing Div C East is it, it kind of Mostly feels like Div e D East actually. Yeah, it was the competitive half of Div D East. Not to say that the others that got left behind weren't competitive, but I mean it's XGD, it's um, your math teachers, uh, form the team formerly known as Team Mana Frenzy, uh, who is Div C. Two um, Church of Murky guys are on the Artanis. Team. yeah the protectors of mm -hmm, war mm -hmm. um so we we still feel like we know a lot of these folks um and a lot of them are in xgd so that'll be pretty cool um ironically the one team that won't be with us is regen ghost they're going to be in div uh, b east one of the div b east or west one of the two i don't remember mm -hmm. just too many b's <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got the three divisions this time gotta yeah. remember where my norths and souths are <laughs> <laughs> yeah and this you know what's really great is like especially for gibbs um, we had some issues last week with the hurricane. So, yeah, yeah and I know Gibbs is still currently uh, displaced. And, you know, I'm sure there's other people in NGS that are displaced. So it was mm. really cool to kind of uh, have the community come behind us. I know DeWitt was messaging us and the other people in XGD were messaging us, really kind of looking out for us um, and hoping for the best. And uh, through it all, we, we obviously pushed through and got our practices in where we could we all got the regal tiger mount la uh, from last season so uh, that was Fantastic. really important <laughs> turd got his two days before it ended got yeah lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it baby we all got it i had a lot of support from i know some people watching the cast linehouse and key uh creating smurfs just to help me gibbs also creating a smurf just to help me um so uh 
it's been it's been a really good ride and and man it, you know it, it feels good it feels good we actually won our first playoff game last week uh so this is our second playoff game win so yeah it's kind of cool well fantastic stuff that uh that sort of wraps things up for me once again congratulations on your victory as we close things out here on season five are there any uh, any final shout outs you'd like to make Gibbs, why don't you go first, my friend? I'd like to shout out the Beatbox uh, and actually Regen Ghost. They were uh, very scary in most of those games. Honestly, very, they very. Uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, they destroyed me with their Wombo combo every single time, and it was it hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah, and uh, shout out for me um, to my Meme Factory LLC friends. I know they're watching, they were commenting. Looks like we got a 267 message thread from them. So uh, <laughs> really appreciate it uh, for watching. And, and thanks to you for casting, DeWitt for putting on this excellent tournament in the off season, keeping us all fresh. And uh, thanks to my team, I guess. All right. Fantastic. Well, that's going to uh, going to wrap things up here. Once again, thank you for joining me. Congratulations on your win, and good luck for going forward in uh, NGS Season Ten. Thanks, man, and and yeah, we'll see you there. I'm sure. Absolutely, right. looking forward to seeing you again. Take care. Thanks again for the cast. My pleasure entirely. We'll see you soon.